Timo, one of the deacons on duty today. I want to welcome all of you on this cold but wintry and warm inside service. At the October 19th meeting, council voted to continue following the CDC guidelines, which means that while transmission rates are low or medium, masks are optional, and that is the case today. <coughs> Those joining us on Facebook Live are encouraged to participate through the chat function. We apologize that Zoom is temporarily not an option for services or fellowship time today, but we hope to resume again in January. Required practices at 9.15 on Sunday mornings. All are welcome to join. I want to thank Jeannie Edwards and the Outreach Committee for coordinating the Christmas gifts for families served by the Emmaus children. If your gift is not yet under the tree in the College of Paul, please be in contact with Jeannie. Christmas Poinsettia and orders are due to Vicki today. Cost is $10 per plant. Please indicate whether they are in memory of or in honor of. <coughs> Church Council meets Friday, December 16th at noon, College of Paul, and on Zoom. Wednesday, December 14th. There will be a blue Christmas service here at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary. Blue Christmas is a service that honors people that are experiencing grief and melancholy. Next Sunday, December 18th, the Handbell Choir will play for us. Christmas Eve service is at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary and it will be also on Facebook Live. Christmas Day, there will be a Facebook service only. The church will not be open, but please stay tuned for announcements of churches in the area that will be open. I believe the church, Congregation Church in Ellsworth is having a Christmas Day service. We will have something on Facebook and that will be uh, available if you wish to watch it at home. Christmas cookie bakers are needed. Please bring baked goods to Christmas cheer baskets church next Sunday, December 18th. Deacons will pack and deliver baskets on Tuesday the 20th. Are there any announcements from the congregation? Jeannie, wait a minute till David gets you the microphone. Just a little amendment in terms of the gifts for children in the mass. Uh, Betty and I will take them in tomorrow morning. So after you leave here, you still got some time to get your gift. Get it over here. Yeah, thank you very much. And on that note, as of yesterday, there were still a couple of tags that were un unclaimed. So if anybody is in the spirit of giving, take a look at the, the tags and uh, you don't want to leave anybody behind. Are there any other announcements? Do we have anything in the chat room? I don't see anything. All right. The birthdays and anniversaries coming up. December 10th. That was yesterday. Kathy and Ron's anniversary. The belated anniversary greetings to Kathy and Ron down in Florida. On the 15th is Frank Dorsey. On the 16th is Ashley Illerbach Johnson. The 18th is Barbara Reeve. The 20th is Sheila O'Neill. 21st is Mary Angela Davis. 27th is Jennifer Ashmore. And the 30th is Ethan Van Bui's anniversary. And the others that you know of. Yes. Tomorrow is my daughter Mary Shannon's birthday. Tomorrow is Mary Shannon's birthday. That's daughter. Any others? Yes. If we could just remember, it popped up in my Facebook memories, but Bill Reeves' birthday was yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Reeves' birthday was yesterday, so he is in our thoughts as well. Let us center ourselves and prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Welcome. I'm Reverend T.J. Mack, and we are the Union Congregation of the Church of Hancock. We are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ denomination. We believe that no matter who you love, no matter where you live, no matter how or when you join us, you are welcome here. We believe no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I thank you for being here. I ask that we now stand in body or spirit to sing our enjoy, which is in our bulletins. loved ones, people in prison, people who are isolated and feel on their own. When we look around, we see shadows of grief, people dreading the holidays because of painful memories or because they don't want to spend another Christmas alone. In the face of sadness, we light a candle of joy. In the face of grief, in the face of loss, we light a candle of joy. May the light from this candle overwhelm the world. May the light from this candle say to all that God's joy is coming on earth as it is already is in heaven. Be not afraid, God's joy is in heaven. the peace to one another with American Sign Language. Peace be with you. And also with you. And as we light the candle, maybe I'll ask the camera, would you mind lighting the rainbow candle, the peace candle, and I'll read a poem from Brad Reynolds, Gotta Take, Rejoice. Because Christmas is almost here. Because dancing fits so well with music. Because inside baby clothes are miracles. Gotta take. Because some people love you. Because of chocolate. Because pain does not last forever. Because Santa Claus is coming. Gotta take. Because of laughter. Because there really are angels. Because your fingers fit your hands. Because forgiveness is yours for the asking. Because of children. Because of parents. Rejoice. Because the blind see and the lame walk. Rejoice. Because lepers are clean and the deaf hear. Rejoice. Because the dead will live again. And there is good news for the poor. Rejoice. Because of Christmas, because of Jesus, we rejoice. We have a hymn change. We're going to sing Joy to the World from our Red Hymnals number 134.
join me in the invocation. As, As your Holy Spirit spoke to Mary, the Mother of our Lord, speak to us now through your word, that by hearing you may continue to be faith and be strengthened to do your will. Amen. children present in the sanctuary, but if there's anyone young at heart, you're welcome to come and join me. Thank you, Diane. Here we, <laughs> we have been reading from this wonderful book, All Creation Waits, The Advent Mystery of New Beginnings, written by Gail Boss and illustrated by David Klein. And I've been giving my child at heart the choice of the animal we read from each week. So Diane, thank you for volunteering. Would you like us to read about the wild turkey, the woodchuck, the skunk, the red fox, or the northern cardinal? The red fox. The red fox it is. And usually I preface this with animals know how to prepare and wait. They're waiting for the light to come back. They're waiting for the warmth to come back. We are basically doing what the animals are doing. They certainly did it first. The red fox. The longest night of the year retreats reluctantly. Slow to wake, morning seeps in, gray and grainy. Startling, then, the quick orange brush stroked against the snow at the field's edge, her signature curving into the thicket and gone. Finally, the fox will rest. It's likely she's been out since the sun set yesterday, 15 dark hours ago, hours keenly focused on quieting her hunger. The berries and autumn fruits she loves are gone. The beetles, other insects, and lizards perish or burrowed underground. Most birds far flown, and few creatures have died from exposure this early into winter, or she would feed her urgent body with their fallen ones. Here's a beautiful picture of our fox. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I turn my route toward her vanishing point. Intersecting her tracks, I follow and see them change. They fall closer together and pivot a quarter turn, then stop. For six feet or so, the snow lies quiet, unbroken. Then a churned commotion of a hole and two drops of blood. Minutes ago, the fox was trotting westward across the field when tiny rustling, shuffling, squeaking sounds rippled through the snow far from as far away as a football field and into the soft receptacles of her ears. She stopped. She cocked her head to the side. Right ear high, left ear high, measuring a split second leg between the rustle squeak reaching one ear then the other. Thus she estimated where under the white expanse its source stirred. But to stay alive, she needs precision. Once she'd taken the sounds measure, she crept ahead, ears alert, furred pillows of her paws falling with less than a whisper on the snow. Then, still listening, she turned, aiming her body of attention just east of true north. She saw north. It seems Earth's magnetic field creates a patch of shadow on her retinas, on her eyes retina to show her north. When she turned north, the shadow she saw went ahead of her step by deliberate step. Homing in, she lined up the shadow, always the same, precise distance from her, with the shifting under snow sound. For a breath, she crouched. Then she reared onto her hind legs, knees bent, launching up and out on a trajectory into which she had factored speed and direction of the invisible, scurrying depth and resistance of the snow cover. In midair, she made minute corrections with the rudder of her tail at the peak of a precisely ordered, at the peak of a precisely ordered arc, she plunged, 
for a silent instant she seemed headless in the snow. Then she wriggled up out of the crater she had made. Right at me, she lifted her muzzle skyward and gulped. <coughs> though she listens intently to detect the distant wisp of sound, though she trains on it the whole of her attention, allowing no distractions as she moves into moves in with steps polished into silence. In winter, these remarkable powers are insufficient. To complete them, to find the hidden nourishment, she must turn in the direction of the shadow. If she leaps without its reliable lead, she will come up empty four out of five times. Following it, she is fed. Thank you, God, for giving us the red fox to learn from, to be in awe of. May they remain healthy and vibrant among us. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Diane whispered to me that she is not going to draw our red fox, but if anyone would like the paper and the colored <laughs> pencils and crayons, each week, the child that has been here has drawn whatever animal they've chosen. So anyone is welcome to draw one if they like. There is no pressure. There is no right or wrong. <laughs> Mary Angela, thank you. And more than one, if anybody else wants to just come over and grab some supplies. The New Testament reading today is from Luke 1, verse 46 through 55. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowly state of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Indeed, his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his child Israel, and in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The second reading is a poem, an excerpt from Good is the Flesh, Body, Soul, and Christian Faith. The poem is by Brian Wren. Good is the flesh that the word has become. Good is the birthing, the milk and the breast. Good is the feeding, caressing, and rest. Good is the body for knowing the world. Good is the flesh that the word has become. Good is the body for knowing the world sensing the sunlight, the tug of the ground, feeling, perceiving within and around. Good is the body from cradle to grave. Good is the flesh that the word has become. Good is the body from cradle to grave, growing and aging, arousing, impaired, happy in clothing or lovingly bared. Good is the pleasure of God in our flesh. Good is the flesh that the word has become. Good is the pleasure of God in our flesh, longing in all as in Jesus to dwell. Glad of embracing and tasting and smell. Good is the body for good and for God. Good is the flesh that the word has become.
wanted fire for that gift. Please pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. An eight-year-old is in the car with their parent. They say, do you want me to throw the confetti in my pocket? The parent says, no, not in the car. Why do you have confetti in your pocket? The eight-year-old says, it's my emergency confetti. I carry it everywhere in case there is good news. <laughs> Mary received surprising news, alarming news, good news from the angel Gabriel. In this week's Gospel of Luke, we heard the Magnificat, so named from the first word of the text in the Latin translation called the Vulgate. The song, or chant, follows Mary's astonishing encounter with the angel and her running to Elizabeth to share the good news. This is a beautiful song, but it does frustrate me a bit. For two moments. Well, Two reasons that I'll name. That the church has used this voice, used their voice to signal how women should be in the world, using Mary as an example. Mary has frequently been portrayed as humble, obedient, and faithful. All good and wonderful qualities, ways that we should be in relation to God. All good, except when the church only applies these as desirable qualities for half of the population, the half that is capable of childbirth. And the second frustration, it's decidedly not desirable or appropriate when the church or the hierarchy of the church, which are generally men, are substituted for God. The replacement gods to whom women should be humble, obedient, and faithful. So having named those issues, we can move on. Let us be aware of how we intentionally or unintentionally assign gender biases. The Magnificat expresses Mary's awe of God. It acknowledges the magnitude of the ask to which she has said yes. According to the author of Luke, God keeps their promise to Israel as foretold by the prophet Isaiah, fulfilling the promise in the person of Jesus. Mary's Magnificat, recorded only in Luke's Gospel, is modeled on 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, the song of Hannah. In 1 Samuel, it is written that Hannah prayed for a firstborn son after being barren for many years. When her prayer was answered, she promised her child, named Samuel, to the Lord as a Nazarite. Mary said yes to having a child, to having God's child. She said yes without knowing anything more, as do we, those that have children, say yes without knowing the trajectory that life will follow, that there will be joy and heartbreak, maybe the only certainties. One big difference between Hannah and Mary Hannah asked for her pregnancy. Mary did not. That is not to say that Mary or women that find themselves unexpectedly pregnant are not joyful about their pregnancy and about their children. But the people that I know do go through an adjustment period, experiencing all variety of emotions prior to coming to acceptance, anticipation, and joy. These need not be linear experiences, and most likely are not linear experiences. And they also include fear, anger, confusion, alongside wonder, awe, blessing, and gratitude. By all outward appearances, Mary's situation was difficult and vulnerable, but God called on her, and God calls on us, to draw on, us on a wellspring deeper than the surface of things we can see. Henri Nguyen speaks to this wellspring. Joy, he writes, is the experience of knowing that you are unconditionally loved and that nothing, sickness, failure, emotional distress, depression, war, or even death, can take that love away. 
Thus, joy and sorrow can not only coexist, joy can even be found in the midst of very difficult or sorrowful circumstances. Mary knew, as all of us know, the joy and the fear so immediately linked when welcoming a child into the world. We know that love and joy and pain and suffering are inseparable. And still, it is good news, even knowing how this story unfolds, especially knowing how the story unfolds. The birth of Christ, God in the flesh, God sharing our joy and our sorrow, God being present with us in all manner of experiences, in the depths of despair and in the height of our joys. Mary embraced her life, embraced the movement of the Spirit, not the life she expected, but the life as it played out. So like Mary, the God-bearer, let us pray this week to take the Spirit of God into our own bodies. Let us submit to God's blessings. Let us share the good news of the world with our sisters and brothers. Let us dare to follow the way proclaimed by Mary's song. Let our souls magnify the Lord. Let our spirits rejoice in God. Let us be ever ready to celebrate the good news, the good news, and all good news. Let us always be ready with our emergency. <laughs> Please rise in body or spirit. We'll sing from our black hymnal number 106. My heart sings out with joyful praise. to wipe away this morning in so many corners of our community. Um, I will start by expressing condolences to those here present from Golden Acres, to Peggy, and to Coulter, and to Don, um, and to all of us who knew Ed, who knew Ed and her, so saddened by his passing, by his sudden and unexpected. We offer condolences to Vicki and her family. Her uncle Sonny died on Thursday morning, and she is heading up to a celebration of life with her family. We offer 
prayers for family and friends of Penny Patton, a friend of myself and Pat. Connections to Rockland and Lincolnville, who died this week. And we offer prayers for family and friends of a coworker of mine who 15 years before arriving here, of Don Gross, who also died this week. Prayers for his family, his wife and five daughters, extended family. And some of you are aware of the tragic accident in Castine early Saturday morning. We offer prayers for the families of four young men who died in that accident and for the three survivors. Pat Summer sent me an email this morning. One of her cast members is a aunt of Chase, one of the deceased. So there will be so many connections, and we will hold all these people in our hearts. Let's have a moment of silence for all, all of these souls, gone but not forgotten. ask God in your infinite mercy that you cradle these families in your loving arms and carry them through these hard days ahead. Amen. <laughs> Debbie Maddox, also of Golden Acres, and has been singing in our choir, is not feeling well today, um, but she asks for prayers for her upcoming cataract surgeries tomorrow and the following Monday. Um, and Barbara asks for Prayers. She's having back surgery on Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon at St. Joe's in Bangor. We ask for prayers for Kathy's sister Patty having surgery this coming Friday, breast cancer surgery. Ask for prayers for Pat and my friend Mary, hospitalized after uh, many, many chemo treatments trying to regain some stability in her life. Continued prayers for Roberta. Continued prayers for Ginger and John Cunningham. From Gina online, joy and thanks that Jamie's second knee replacement went smoothly. <laughs> it's wonderful news. May his recovery continue to go so well. And we have others in the sanctuary that like to lift up a prayer. Vicki. Sorry, it's been an emotional week this week. Yes, it has. Would ask for prayers for Rachel and her family as she lost her grandfather this week. Um, so prayers for the family of Guy Peabody. Um, as you already said, I'd like prayers for my family, my aunt, my cousins as we get ready to bury my uncle tomorrow. I also would ask for prayers as it's going to be interesting to see how I deal with getting down there. Um, the furthest I've been since surgery is Ellsworth. We're talking a two, two and a half hour travel tomorrow both ways. So it's going to be an interesting travel and I would ask for prayers that Things go as well as, as to be expected. Um, but I also can finish this off with a joy. My nephew got married yesterday in Florida. Tyler and Sydney got married, um, leaving my sister with her 11 grandchildren together all at once for the first time. So that was a joy. Awesome. Andrea, who loved Edwin very much and loves all the people at Golden Acres. May she know peace and tranquility. Great comfort. Amen. And prayers, especially for Andrea, but also for all the staff at Golden Acres um, as they support 
residents, and I have witnessed the residents supporting the staff. So may you all lift one another up and hold one another in care. Also, we offer prayers for Betty and her stepdaughter Molly, recovering from a recent stroke. Molly recovering from a recent stroke. Prayers for a friend Margaret B. Prayers for Christopher's stepfather Arthur. Prayers for Richard Bellows in hospice in Chicago. That's um, part of Sally Knapp's extended family. Prayers for Stephen Marsha, for Pat and Ed, and for Kenny and Joy and David. Prayers for Bruce's sister Lynn, for David's brother Stephen recovering from a knee surgery. Prayers for Stephen Myrna. Liz and Jim, and for Tamara and Andrew, and for Austin's cousin Danny, and for Gary, and for Liana and all the women she cares for, for Eleanor's stepdaughter Holly, for Tom and Judy's son Andrew and his family, for Kathy and Patty's lifelong friend, also named Kathy, prayers for Cynthia and for Nancy. Prayers for all individuals and families experiencing addictions. Prayers for all caregivers. Prayers for all experiencing memory loss. Prayers for all living with depression and other mental health issues. And prayers for travelers near and far, that they get to where they're going safely. And we pause now for your own silent intentions. Bring before you, O God, the troubles and perils of people and nations, the sighing of prisoners and captives, the sorrows of the bereaved, the necessities of strangers, the helplessness of the weak, the despondency of the weary, the failing powers of the aged. O God, draw near to each, that all may draw near to you. Hear these prayers we have offered, spoken and silent. And hear this prayer as we join our voices together and pray the words that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, Deliver us from you, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory.
good gifts come from you, O oh God. May these offerings be used for the betterment of all living things. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. We'll sing from our red hymnal, number 427, My Life Flows On in Endless Song.
whatever else may be out there. And please come admire the red fox that Mary Angela is here